was a Port Charles accent. No, I'm from England originally. I have an aunt who lives out here. She invited me to stay. I knew it was my big chance. Your chance for a career. Ever since I was a child, I've always dreamed about being in a Broadway show. So when she invited me out here, I just got all my life savings out of the bank and I came right out here. The musicals in England, didn't you think of trying out there? Oh, you know as well as I do, London's West End just isn't the same as Broadway. Most of the musicals are second runs of, of, of Broadway shows. I want the real thing. I want Broadway. You really have the bug, Miss McTavish. I'm afraid it's incurable. But there's no cure invented yet except to give in to it, which I'm pleased to say you're doing by taking this first step. You know, uh, I have a confession to make. Uh, may I? I'm all yours, dear girl. You're the first person who's really encouraged me in this. My parents thought I was flighty. They thought I was dreaming my life away. Nonsense. Broadway's a reality. Why shouldn't you have a crack at it? Just hearing you say Broadway make, makes me feel something. I know just what you mean. Once it's really in your blood, like it's in mine, there's nothing else like it. Right, that's... I was so surprised to find someone like you right here in Fort Charles. Yes, well, there's a reason for that. Yes, yes, I'm sure there is. See, on Broadway, I see the same old faces, one audition after the other. Roland, that's Roland Gilbert. Roland and I both agree that every once in a while, one has to get out to where the real people are. Find a fresh, young, exciting new talent. You know Roland Gilbert, the choreographer? The Roland Gilbert? My dear girl, we go way back. In fact, the chief reason that I'm here is to find fresh new faces for his new Broadway production. Really? It's going to be a smash. It's called the Hopscotch Girls, and Roland and I decided we needed new girls. New faces. New and exciting girls who can really dance. That's wonderful. That's why I'm here. Well, then, if you're ready, let's see what you can do. Uh, did you uh, prepare anything? Yes, yes, I prepared something. I'll have some music. All right. Don't be nervous. You can limber up a bit if you'd like. Put the music on here. Find my old reliable phonograph works just fine for studio purposes. All right. Whenever you're ready. Let me see a grandpa mall. Other side. And a port of rock. Okay, that's fine. I'm sorry, I, I, I should have done much better. True. But nevertheless, you do have talent. I do? I've been in the business long enough to know it when I see it. Not that I run into a natural talent every day of the week. When I do, I still get a thrill. 
Well, that's wonderful, Mr. Hannibal. Just think, when I left home this morning, I nearly turned around and went back. Well, that would have been a big mistake. Does this mean you'll recommend me to Roland Gilbert? Hold on. You're way ahead of me, Miss McTavish. But you did say I have talent. Yes, I did. A natural talent. Then I don't understand. Listen very carefully. This may be the most important decision of your life. Yes? Talent, yes. Technique, no. However, technique can be learned. How? By working hard, of course, and a good teacher. I myself could teach you technique, Miss McTavish. And it's my opinion, once you've mastered that, you'd be a shoe-in for Roland's new musical. You honestly think that I could get a job on a Broadway show? I do. Provided, of course, you're willing to work very hard. Oh, I'll do anything, but you, would you take me on as a student? Well, let me say I'll consider it. A great many girls have auditioned for me already, and I can only help those who show real promise. Oh, I promise I'll work really hard. You have no idea how much this means to me. Well, you make it difficult to say no. But you must work very hard. I will. Thank you. <laughs> you realize, of course, there'll be a charge for the lessons. Oh, of course. How much? $150 for 10 lessons. Now, that's considerably less than my usual fee, but considering your talent, I'll make an exception. $150? You can't swing that? Oh, yes, I, I can. I, I will, even if I have to borrow it from my aunt. But uh, how soon do we start? Tomorrow. The sooner the better. Very well, then. I'll see you at the same time tomorrow. Cash in full, in advance, and we will begin. I, I'll, I'll have all the money, I promise, and I'll be here. I'm just thrilled. Thank you. Till tomorrow, Miss McTavish. Yeah, I'll be here. Well, you realize that this news is going to be devastating to Grant. You mean to Andre Chernin? Whatever. It's terrible news for him, not to mention his wife as well. We have no choice. The real Grant Putnam is very much alive in Manhattan. All right. Tell me, what plans does the State Department have for the man that we know as Putnam? I'm authorized to make him the same offer we made before, which he turned down. Change of identity. Prepared to give him a whole new life, a new name, birth certificate, social security number, driver's license, credit cards, everything. And a new location. Of course. We'll relocate him in a city, preferably far away, where no one knows him. Well, he knocked back this offer once before. Why do you suppose he won't decline it again? I'm hoping that learning the real Grant Putnam is alive will change his mind. I wouldn't count on that. In our opinion, the man has no choice. In any event, we're going to have to tell him about the real Grand Putnam. When do we tell him? Will tomorrow be convenient for you? Yeah, the sooner the better. Good. And uh, why don't you arrange a meeting with Putnam, with Chernin, here, if that's acceptable? Yeah, he's good. Good. I'll be at the Port Charles Hotel. Just give me a call and tell me what time to be here. I'll do that. Excuse me, but do you mind my making an observation? Go ahead. Seems to me that you're taking this whole turnaround kind of personally. You're right. Look, Grant, Andre. I know Grant Putnam as Grant Putnam. I'll always know him as Grant Putnam. I know him as nothing else. And we're not just friendly. We're friends. There's a difference there. I agree. Apart from that, my wife is very close to Celia. They've been through a lot together. It means a lot for her to have Celia in Port Charles. Look, I'll talk to Chernin myself. If you want an out... No, 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 no. I want to be there. I'll be waiting to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, listen, um... Thanks for all your help, Commissioner. Before you go. Yes? The real Grant Putnam. What's he planning to do about this situation? That is entirely up to him. Robert, I'm so glad you're here. I was right. You often are, love. About what? Hannibal, I swear it's a scam. He wants to start teaching me tomorrow. And get this, he guarantees a Broadway audition with Roland Gilbert, the creme de la creme of choreographers, for a new show called The Hopscotch Girl. Really? Naturally, it's a bargain, 
$150 for 10 classes. Cash in advance, of course. Of course. He made me dance for him, and I swear, he hardly gave a darn. But what's wrong? I had a visit from the State Department. And? The real Grant Partner is still alive. Oh, no. Alive and in New York City. Well, what does that mean? I, I wish I knew, love. The State Department want to give Grant a whole new identity. Tomorrow, we want to tell him about the real Grant Putnam. A new identity? What exactly does that mean? Oh, it'll be a whole new life for him. New background, new ID, new location. He has to move from Port Charles? That's what the State Department want to suggest. But he turned that down already when he defected. That was before we knew the real Grant Putnam was alive. Where did they find him? A mental hospital in England. Apparently, he was uh, half dead. Uh, he'd gone mute. But of late, he's recovered his memory. When are they going to tell Grant? Tomorrow. And they're also going to run the, the new identity bit by him. But that's impossible. Their lives are here. I won't be able to talk to Celia. She won't even be able to talk to the quartermaster. It's a whole lot deeper than that. She won't even be able to talk to her father. In effect, Celia and Grant will cease to exist. And yet they're alive. It's like... A... It's, it's like sending them to prison. There's another side to this. Once news of the real Grant Putnam gets out, the publicity is going to be real ugly. Well, the publicity will be hard to handle. I'll give you that. But not nearly as hard as living in some place with fake names, knowing that you're not going to be able to talk to any of your friends ever again or Celia's family. It's, it's a nightmare. I know. But that's what they're going to put to him. It's so unfair. Life often is. But that ain't gonna help Grant. Silly's gonna be devastated. This is Commissioner Scorpio. Is Grant Putnam there? It's imperative that I reach him. Yeah, all right. When he comes in, tell him to call me, will you? He's got the number. And tell him it's urgent. I'll wait for the call. You said you're going to tell him tomorrow? Yeah. And it's going to be tough. Very, very tough. Mm -hmm. State Department says Celia and Grant won't do it. Celia's not going to live the rest of her life in hiding. But you suppose that Grant could? No, I don't think he could. He's working so hard to make a new life for himself. Moving away, assuming a new name, never speaking to any of his friends again. I think he'd consider that running away, and so would I. Well, look, I'm inclined to agree with you. But do you suppose having his name dragged through the mud is going to be any easier? It's going to be hell for Celia. I just don't know how to give any advice here. Oh, and speaking of advice. Yes? I want to say this now before you get any deeper. Are you sure about this Hannibal business? Yes. I'm not exactly without experience in this area, and yes, I'm sure I can smell it. Then what I'm about to say is very important, Holly. If this guy realizes you're setting him up, there's no telling how he might react. I can handle it, and don't you stop me. It's very exciting seeing him taking the hook. Being on the other side of the fence is fascinating. Yeah, whatever happened to the uh, simpler fascinations? Like what? Your aspirations to be the galloping gourmet. Oh, that. Yeah, that. That, as you so put it, represents a tidy investment in kitchen gadgetry. You've got boxes out there you haven't even opened yet. I opened the walk yesterday. Does that mean that we're having uh, a tempura for dinner or something like that? No. All the directions were in Japanese. Well, sayonara to the walk. Does that mean we're at the mercy of the pasta? No, the dough is still all stuck in the machine. Well, out of a dirt, shit to the linguine. I thought it might be fun for us to eat out for a while. Oh, I wonder when you get round to that. You don't mind? I would follow you anywhere. But you've got to promise me something. Oh, anything. Now, Holly, I'm serious. You listen to me. You want to go after this Hannibal character, you're going to be very, very careful. I'm always careful. Yeah, but especially. Now, we're partners in this, all right? 
partners. So you don't go off at any tangents. Got it? Partners, I promise. Right. Should I get that? No, that'll be grand returning my call. May I make one suggestion? Please. Uh, don't tell him the man from the State Department is here. He'll just worry all night. Yeah, I had the same thought myself. Hi, Grant. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for returning my call. Look, I have something to talk to you about. No, no, I need to do it in person. How about tomorrow, noon? Yeah. Oh, look, why don't you plan on coming here? Thank you. And uh, my best to see you. Tomorrow, noon. Hundred. Twenty. Forty and ten makes one hundred and fifty dollars. Thank you. You know, I could have gone to the bank myself. Well, I realize that, but I have this thing about punching the buttons on the automatic teller. You know, it must have been a very long line. You've been gone for an hour. My, aren't we suspicious today? Robert, I've lived with you long enough to know when you're up to something. Look at the money. What about it? Look at it carefully. Genuine American currency. Looks like it. Feels like it. Even smells like it. Tastes like it, too. The point is, it is the real thing. It's just that I took it down to the police lab for a bit of added attention. Oh, it's marked. In a way that only a police specialist can identify it. You think of everything. I wish you had of. What do you mean? Holly, look, this, this Hannibal character. He may turn out to be the real thing. All right, so he gave you a hard line. That just could be his approach. Robert, I'm not even anywhere near good enough to audition for a Broadway show, let alone be in one. And anyway, if he is the real thing, I'll end up with ten dance lessons. But what else did he promise you? I think it was your name in light, stardom, Broadway, Hollywood, da 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 Don't worry, I won't forget who gave me my big start. Where are you going? Upstairs to get changed. My audience awaits. It's uh, new, isn't it? The bag? Yes, I got it on sale at Wyndham's. And the leotard? Well, it wasn't on sale, but I went crazy for the car. It's very nice. I want it to look as authentic as possible, mm. this whole thing. I want it to look like I'm really enthusiastic about the dancing, the classes, everything. Authentic. Oh, definitely authentic. Wide-eyed, innocent. Member of the weaker sex at their absolute weakest. The perfect mark. Mm. What's wrong? Your attitude, for starters. Well, what's the matter with it? Aren't you the slightest bit nervous? Why should I be? You could be dealing with a dangerous guy here. He's a con man. He's not a killer. You corner a con man, you don't know how he's going to react? He has to know he's cornered first. Wasn't it you that said that uh, you cannot con a con artist? I believe it was W.C. Fields who started that rumor. Whatever. There's always an element of truth behind rumors. I'll be fine, Robert. I could get you some backup. Yes, I know you could, but I don't want you to. This is just an in and out operation. Hannibal, whilst being a clever trickster, has neither the strength or the inclination or the bad sense to do anything violent. Hmm. You be careful. You worry too much. Maybe. Now, I'd better be going. Uh, before you $15 go... fifteen dollars a lesson. I don't want to be late. Look, before you go... What now? Give me the bracelet. Why? No questions, just give me the bracelet. I can't imagine what you want it for, but sure, go ahead. You'll find out soon enough. Isadora Duncan. Oh, Mr. Hannibal. Your profile, your moves. You could be the next Isadora Duncan, the greatest dancer of all time. That's up to you, I guess. Well, I'm afraid it'll take a few more than ten lessons. Have you been waiting long? 
Just a few minutes, but I didn't mind at all just being in a real dance studio. That's such a thrill for me. <laughs> yes, the smell of the grease paint, the roar of the crowd. I know just what you're talking about, the theater. There's nothing else like it. You brought your payment, of course. Well, some of it, anyway. I remember telling you I needed full payment, Miss McTavish. Just that my car insurance bill came this morning and it took most of my money. I see, your car. A car is more important than your future in dance. Oh, I didn't say that. Your action said it, Miss McTavish. I'll admit it disturbs me. You see, in my long experience, I found it best for students to pay the full amount. It shows that they're serious. It shows that they're willing to make the commitment. Well, I'm willing. It's just that I don't... Oh, excuses, my dear. With Alexander Hannibal, either you make the commitment or you pack up your slippers and go back to the street. What if, after five lessons, you find I have no talent? Talent is not the question. Preparation is our goal. You have to be educated both artistically and technically. Then, and only then, will you be ready for your Broadway audition. Ten whole lessons. All or none. That is your choice. I don't know. It's such a lot of money. You have talent, Miss McTavish. I could see that from the minute you walked in that door. Now, you're going to have to reach inside yourself and see if it's worth it to make the commitment. I guess it'll have to be frozen dinners for a couple of months. Uh, it's all here. You can count it if you like. I'm sure it is. Thank you, my dear. If I seemed a bit harsh, I, I hope you understand why. Oh, like you said, the commitment. Right. Financial and now spiritual. Well, that you certainly don't have to worry about. These lessons are the culmination of a dream I've had for years. <laughs> Come here, man. Uh, you know Mr. Jackson from the State Department, of course. Yes, I remember him only too well. How are you, Mr. Jackson? Very well, thanks. And you? Uh, I'm getting by. Uh, have a seat, Grant. Thank you. Robert, judging by the look on your face, I take it that whatever you have to say is not good news. What happened to your face? I see you haven't changed, Mr. Jackson. You still answer a question with a question. An altercation of some kind, a fight? Uh, why don't we just say I walked into a door? You all right? I'm doing better than a door. Could we uh, get right to the point of this meeting, please? Yeah, about a few questions first. Like, how much do you know about the real Grant Putnam? Specifically. Do you have any idea what might have happened to him? Robert, unless my memory is faulty, we've been over this all before. Let's go over it again. Why? It's become rather important, Grant. Now, can you answer the question? <sighs> all right. What became of the real Grant Putnam? I don't know. I never saw him. I never talked with him. I never had any contact with him whatsoever. When the switch was made? I was injected with a drug, put on a plane for London, and I, I enrolled in med school. I'd been briefed for months of, prior to that about Grant Putnam's background, his, his, his likes, his dislikes, what he ate, how he spoke. It was merely a matter of trading places. Let's, let's get back to our original question. Yeah, what happened to him? I don't know. I, I assume he was eliminated by the DVX, murdered, should I say. And you had no connection to that murder? Mr. Jackson, killing was not part of my job. I was told I was to impersonate Grant Putnam until further orders arrived. Several years later. Exactly. And by that time, for all intents and purposes, I was Grant Putnam. As you've already said. Over and over again. <laughs> you both know my story. What is the point in repeating it? Well, there's been a recent development. What sort of development? He's not dead. Who? The real Grand Putnam. 
He's turned up. Very much alive. You okay, Grant? Yeah, I think so. Robert, what happened? How did you find out? Eight years ago, the real Grant Putnam was abducted from his London hotel room, drugged, transported, and thrown over a section of the Dover Cliffs. Presumed dead. In any event, left for dead. Anyway, some fishermen found him, hospitalized him. He later turned up in a mental hospital where he spent eight rather traumatic years as a mute. He couldn't communicate at all? Well, forward. Give him a bad case of amnesia. A newspaper article about you and the events here in Port Charles finally triggered his memory. Are you telling me he's coming back? I suppose that'll be up to him. The point is, you can no longer use his name. <sighs> Look, we've talked about this, and we're suggesting you go back to using Andre Chernin. I mean, after all, this your name. No, I can't do that, Robert. I'm, I... I've got to consider Celia. She hates that name. We both do. Grant, you don't have much choice. No, I can't. I won't do it. I refuse to do it. Robert, don't you understand? I am Grant Putnam. I have been Grant Putnam for the last eight years. No one's denying that. It's just the name. It doesn't have to affect the rest of your life. Look, if I could make a suggestion... Somebody better make a suggestion, Mr. Let the, Jackson. Let the government give you a new name, a new identity. It'll be a second chance for you, a whole new life for you and Celia. No, we can't. That's impossible. I don't see that you have much choice. It's the other man's name. You have no right to it. Mr. Jackson, my wife's relatives, her family are all here in this community. Things were finally beginning to go back to normal. We can't just pack up and move away. Robert. Look, I'm sorry to have to go along with him. But he's right. Your days as Grant Putnam are over. Five, six. That's good. That's good. Use your strength. Step out. And hold. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Real good. I see. We'll take a short break. Okay, I can use it. Hello? Yes, Mrs. Hughes. Well, I'm in the middle of a class. No, that's all right. We're on a short break. I see. Well, yes. Yes, things do come up. A lot of money? Well, you could say that, but weighed against the knowledge you're receiving, I think you'll see it's well worth the investment. <laughs> Installments. No, I'm afraid that wouldn't be possible. You see, the payment is more than just strength of the commitment. Now, I can lead people to dance, but I can't give them the desire. That you must bring with you. Yes, yes, along with the 150. All right. You talk to your husband and let me know. I realize that, Mrs. Hughes. Yes, I know. Very good then, Mrs. Hughes. Goodbye. How do we feel? Rested? Yes, I could go all day. <laughs> yes, we only had it. Shall we continue? All right, same thing again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and... Good. Move. And... Good, stay with me. Okay. Walk, 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 turn. There you go. Oh, I'm All right, sorry. we'll start again, we'll start again. How's that? Excellent. Well, I'm sorry, Miss McTavish, but I'm afraid we're out of time. Already? Yes. Goes by in the blink of an eye. Huh? Oh, can't say I'm not tired. How did I do? You have to ask? Well, it, it felt all right. It was more than all right. You were excellent. No, I'm serious. Rarely do I ever see so much natural ability. Are you sure you haven't had professional training? Well, like I said before, just a few classes when I was a child. 
Then you either have an excellent memory or you have even more natural ability than I'd first assumed. I've been beginner's luck, I suppose. That must be it. There it goes again. Hello? Uh, Mrs. Brenner, how are you? You do? Well, I'll tell you what. I've got an opening this afternoon. How about if we start then? Uh, you know about the payment. Yes. Yes, preferably cash. Well, that's fine. I'll see you then, Mrs. Brenner. Goodbye. Never ends. Lucky for you, this must be a profitable business. Hardly. Most of the money goes right back into the studio. No, no, no. I do it for the love. Theater is my life. <laughs> you know, once a long time ago, I had all of the potential to become a superstar. What happened? I had to quit. An injury. So I couldn't make the commitment. The commitment that you made today. You really think I have a chance? By this time next year, your name will be on the lips of every theater goer from Broadway to London. How can you be so sure? It's like a sense I have, you know, something I was blessed with, like uh, ESP. I better go and change, otherwise my head will swell so big I won't be able to take the sweater off. Uh, wait. Yes? I have a proposition for you. What kind of proposition? One I believe will make you very happy. Serious? You really have that much faith in me? I've seen your work. Going at this snail's pace would only do you harm. I don't mind. I must insist. The first few lessons are too elementary for you. We'll go on to the more advanced work starting next lesson. In other words, I only have to have eight classes? The sooner you're through here, the sooner you'll be center stage. Of course, the price will remain the same. Of course, of course, whatever. I'm just so excited, the thought of actually being in a Broadway show. Not being in, starring in. You have to start thinking positively. Mr. Hannibal, I, I don't know how to thank you. Just give me your best. That's all I ask. Next week, same time? I'll be here. I can't wait to get back and tell my aunt all about this. She'll be so proud. Bye. Bye-bye. Robert, how do I tell Celia? What the hell am I supposed to say? You want to let me tell? That wouldn't help. I mean, I can just hear myself now. By the way, Celia, the real Grant is alive and living in New York City. And I've got to change my name because we're moving to Montana where the government set me up with a job sheep herding. All right. There's no easy way to break it to her. Robert, she's going to be destroyed. Don't you realize what that woman has gone through? She has put up with everything up to this point, but nobody can expect her to, to accept this. Grant, look, starting a new life doesn't have to be a negative thing. A lot of people would kill for the chance. Yes, but we have a choice. Stay here? Face him. Explain it to him. Robert, I know Grant Putnam. I know, I know how he thinks. I know exactly how he'll react. It is the same way I'd react. The guy's been locked up for eight years. But that doesn't mean he'll be irrational. His cup will hardly be running over with the milk of human kindness. Robert, I'm through running! All right. All right. Promise me this. Don't dismiss the relocation idea. Please. You're trying awfully hard to get rid of me. I'm trying to protect you. Now, there's a big difference. I think it'll... WSB, Grant. Looks like our department and their organization are going to be working together again. We're going to have to ask you to keep this whole thing in the strictest confidence. Why? Some decisions have to be made in regard to crimes committed against the real Grant Putnam. What kinds of decisions, Mr. Jackson? I can't say any more. The WSB is throwing a lid on the whole thing. All right. I'll keep quiet about it. I'll tell Sadie to do this. No. You're not to say anything to Celia. They said that specifically. Are you serious? My orders come from the top, Grant. You're to say nothing to her. As far as Celia and the rest of the world are concerned, the real Grant Putnam is dead. And we're going to keep it that way. Well, it seems I'm quite a bit more advanced than Mr. Hannibal had figured. 
quick learner. He doesn't want to waste my time with beginner's routines. Yeah, consider it. He graciously allowed that I only need eight lessons, for the price of ten, of course. Cheaper twice the price. Mr. Hannibal works extra hard with us born dancers, you know. No doubt. Anyway, I'd better be off. Another step towards Broadway. Listen, before you go, why don't you slip this on? What? It's the bracelet I took off you the other day. What's the matter? It wasn't your style? Cute. Now, put it on. No, not for my class. Well, it'll hardly weigh you down. I never wear jewelry when I dance. You'll wear this piece of jewelry, Fontaine, otherwise you ain't going. Allow me. If you insist. Humor me. There. So what are your plans for today? Oh, I've got Jackson, Grant, Chernin. Oh, what a mess. I don't know what to call him anymore. Oh, imagine how he feels. <sighs> well, anyway, they're dropping by later on, and hopefully Grant will have come to some decision regarding this identity business. How can he do that? How can he not? I mean, either way, the poor guy's gonna lose. If it were me, I'd stay here and face whatever's coming. You just don't want to lose two good friends. Do you? Of course not. But look, I'm going to understand if he decides to move on. Well, so would I. I just wouldn't like it very much. Yeah. Poor Celia, this must be just tearing her apart. She doesn't know yet. Well, she has to. Doesn't she? Well, why wouldn't Grant tell her? Because the State Department said that she wasn't to be informed. But that's so unfair. She has a right to be in on this decision. It's her life, hey, what, too. Wait, wait a minute. This is not my idea. This comes from the State Department. Regardless, whatever decision the Grant makes will be in Celia's best interest. Well, I'm glad I'm not in his shoes, or hers. Yeah, well, your shoes are in enough hot water at the moment with this dance scam you're trying to expose. I'm enjoying it. Well, I'm not. However, this uh, should help reassure me a little bit. Now, pay attention while I show you how to operate it. Uh, you mean it does something more than just sit there? One very important thing. Now. When you press the clasp here, it sends out an electronic signal, which comes directly to me, so I will always know exactly where you are. Good work, 007. But save it for someone who needs it. I'm not going to be in any danger. Look, Holly, if I thought that, I wouldn't have had it done in the first place. Listen, I appreciate the offer, but really, it's not necessary. I will be the judge of that. But, Robert... But me no buts. Now, I never wanted you involved in this in the first place. You just frightened that I'd... Steal your thunder. Please. Don't be an idiot. You want to play Nancy Drew? Let's have a couple of safety factors, all right? It's boy, I'll sport. Listen, you don't wear that thing. Your Broadway career is kaput. Well, since you put it like that, I still think it's silly, but I'll do it. I thought so. Now, one more thing. What now? Be careful. Robert, don't you think you're overreacting just a tad here? I mean, I'm just playing with a small-time con artist. I'm not trying to break an international spy ring. You don't know how dangerous this Hannibal really is. It's been my experience with criminals. You get one cornered, you never know how they're going to react. Roland Gilbert. Speaking. Mr. Gilbert, this is Robert Scorpio. I'm the commissioner of police in Port Charles. Whatever it is, I know nothing about it. I've never even been to Port Charles. Oh, your reputation precedes you. Oh? There's a new dance instructor in town, name of Hannibal. Dance? Uh, you mean like in the cha-cha-cha? I mean like in Broadway. I see. Well, what does this Hannibal have to do with me? Well, I was hoping that you could tell me that. He's opened a studio here and uh, begun offering lessons. Now, he started attracting quite a few students, largely on the strength of guaranteeing them an audition with you. What? Uh, are you auditioning for a Broadway musical now? Well, yes, hopscotch girls. Uh-huh. That's the carrot he's dangling in front of the donkeys. Pardon? Do you have a professional tie with any dance school? Absolutely not. Then I most definitely conduct my own auditions. I'd never trust anyone else to do that. Yeah, that's what we figured. The man's a fraud. Looks that way. Then what are you going to do about it? Cancel my lessons. Commissioner, 
I won't have my name exploited by some two-bit con man. He's asking a good deal more than two bits, Mr. Gilbert, but I see your point. I'll sue! That's your privilege. But for now, let's give Hannibal some rope and see what he does with it. Do you think that's wise? I want to make absolutely sure we've got an airtight case before we drop the net on him. Otherwise, he'll be back on the streets in 24 hours and pull some other scam. Well, if you're sure... Don't worry. We've got Hannibal under close surveillance. Mm. I think the best thing for you to do now is just to sit tight and let us handle it. Uh, you'll let me know what happens. You'll be the first. Very well. Oh, well, feel free to call on me if I can be of any service at all. Oh, I will, but I don't need your help, believe me. I'd dearly love to bring this sordid affair to a speedy conclusion, Commissioner. I've worked very hard to establish my reputation. This charlatan can destroy it in a matter of days. Oh, we're doing our best, Mr. Gilbert. In fact, I've assigned one of our top detectives to the case. She's closing in on Hannibal right now. Five, six, spin and down. Very good. <laughs> very, very good. Really? Margaret, you're a natural. It's your teaching, Mr. Hannibal. You brought that thing to me. I never knew I had. You've certainly been a pleasant surprise. <laughs> I knew you had talent, but I never expected you to pick up the technique so quickly. So do you think I'm ready to audition for Roland Gilbert? My dear, I can practically guarantee it. <laughs> In fact, you may not even need seven more lessons. You think so? Oh, Melissa. Uh, come on in. Have a seat. I'll be right with you. Well, we'll see how you do at your next session, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if you could skip several more lessons. Oh, that would be marvelous. You know, uh, the road to Broadway is paved with dreamers. Now, you can get there if you work very hard. It's up to you. I'll see you next time. Uh, Melissa, are we all set? Well, not exactly, Mr. Hannibal. And what do you mean? Well, I only have $15. Then what are you doing here? Well, couldn't I just take one lesson? I mean, they're $15 a piece, right? Wrong. They're $150 for 10. Oh, I know, but I can't afford all 10. Melissa, I can't afford to take on a student who's only willing to meet me halfway. Now, I make a commitment to each and every dancer who walks through that door. If they're willing to give me their all, then I'm willing to help them on their road to start. But I want that more than anything. In fact, I can, I can do even more than that. I personally will do everything that I can to see to it that the greatest door of all is open to them. An audition with Roland Gilbert. But only to those students who enroll in my complete course. Now, if you're not willing to go the distance, then neither am I. Oh, I am. It's just that I really can't afford to. Melissa, the road to Broadway is paved with dreamers. To get there, it takes talent, hard work, sacrifice. It requires an, an enormous physical investment. In comparison, the financial one is minimal. Oh, no, no, I know that. It's just that I'm in... I was in talking to Raleigh just the other day. Raleigh? Roland Gerbert. He was telling me about all the starry-eyed innocents who litter the path to the great white way. Dancers like yourself, who had the dream but are unwilling to pay the price. No, but I am. Believe me, I'm doing you a favor when I tell you, if you're unable to take all ten lessons, don't take any. You'd just be setting yourself up for a big disappointment. I just couldn't let you do that. I'll get the money, Mr. Hannibal, I swear. I will be back with $150. Somehow. You can't be too dedicated. Oh, you're still here. Yes, I'm just recovering. You gave me quite a workout today. Well, Roland Gilbert is a much harder taskmaster than I. I can hardly wait. So, how much can I get for the ring? Uh, it's not very valuable. It is to me. Huh. Well, then you sell it to yourself, huh? Oh, well, it belonged to my mother. Uh, I can't buy sentiment, just jewels. All right, how much? Uh, I'll give you a hundred bucks for it. Huh? What? It, you gotta take it or leave it. Yeah, but that's not enough. But it's more than it's worth. Look, I need $125. Then you gotta go to a bank, huh? Hey, I'm a salesman. I'm not a loan shark. Please, sir, it's really important. Yeah, yeah, it always is. If I don't get the money, I'll just die. 
Yeah, but if I give it to you, it'll kill me. One and a quarter, huh? $125, yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's the matter with me. You know, a soft touch like me, I ought to be in the Peace Corps. Oh, so uh -huh. you'll give it to me. Yeah, one, two, five, and not a penny more. No, 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 that's all I need. Twenty. Forty, sixty. Eighty, a hundred. Mm, thank you. Twenty, five. Thank you. Yeah, now, you do me a favor. Huh? What? Yeah, you don't come back again. I mean, doing business with you on a regular basis, I'd be broken a week. <laughs> I've got what I wanted. I will not be back, I yeah, promise. Yeah, yeah. Hey, can I help you, lady? Mrs. Scorpio. Yeah, well, what do I owe this honor to? Just browsing. Ah, oh, yeah, anything in particular? What a lovely ring. May I see it? Oh, yeah, a nice piece of merchandise. As a matter of fact, it just come in. Cost me an arm and a leg. Mm, must be very valuable. Oh, yeah, it is. Would you hold it for me? You mean like in Hawk? You do do that on occasion, don't you? Uh, not unless I have to. Hey, I'm sorry. I'd really like to help you, Mrs. Scorpio, but I'm a businessman, huh? You know, I got to eat, too. So what are you planning to do with the ring? Oh, I could get 250 for it easy. Yeah, well, I'll just sell it to the first buyer. You're looking at her. Yeah, you want to buy it? Yes, but not for $250. It's worth every penny. Oh, really? Then why did you tell the girl who just sold it to you that it wasn't worth more than $100? Ah, uh, <laughs> you've been spying on me, huh? Ain't that illegal? No, more so than jacking up prices unfairly. Yeah, but what do you want from me? I'm a businessman. And I'm the police commissioner's wife. Uh, you ain't got a bull rank on me. Are you? Just reminding you. Yeah, well, now I know where we stand. Yeah, well, at least let me make my money back on the deal. That's fair. I paid 150 for the ring. No, you didn't. You paid 125. I'll give you 130. That gives you five dollars for your trouble. Terrific. Now I can retire. Well, if you're not happy, we can oh, always no. renegotiate. No, no, no. That's fine. Any longer, and you'll be talking me into paying you to take the ring. That's true. <laughs> so we have a deal. Hey, what choice do I got? You don't mind a check, do you? Oh, boy. Brad? Hello, Robert. Mr. Jackson, I, uh, I apologize if I've kept you waiting. Well, it's perfectly all right. Have you come to a decision? <clears throat> I thought I had, but I just don't know anymore. What changed your mind? Well, I was beginning to think that things might work out here after all. That it wouldn't be necessary for me and Celia to leave. Now I'm not sure. <laughs> now you think you should? I really don't know. I honestly believe that relocating is your best move. Yes, I know you do, sir. You know, of course, that even if you should decide to stay here in Port Charles, you'll have to assume a different name. You can't go on calling yourself Grant Putnam. How important is a name? Huh, it depends on you. Believe me, once the news gets out that the real Grant Putnam is alive, you and Celia aren't going to have a moment's privacy. You think the publicity was bad before. Just wait. He's absolutely right, Grant. They're going to be all over you. I realize that. If I were you, I wouldn't hesitate to make a clean break. Put your past behind you. Get on with your life. It's certainly tempting. It's really the only solution. Yes. It would be if I just had myself to think about. Are you worried about your wife? Yes, I am. You see, I don't have a past anymore, Mr. Jackson. I've already cut myself off from all that. But Celia, Celia does. She could never contact her family or friends again. It would be as if she were dead. No, no, I'm just gonna have to stick with my original decision. I thank you very much for your generous offer, but Celia and I are gonna stay right where we are. The matter is settled then? Yes, sir, it is. I'm sorry to hear that, but of course it's your decision. I just hope you won't regret it. <laughs> you and me both. Well, I'd better be going. I have a lot to do. There's still a massive amount of work left. Preparing the State Department's official position on all this. Could you tell me one thing? How much time do I have before the, before the news becomes public? 
Well, you have a few days left, I'm quite certain of that. I'll contact you soon about setting up a new identity for yourself. Fine. I'll see myself out. Good day, gentlemen. Are you absolutely sure of this? Yeah, I am. It's gonna be rough on you and Celia. I know it is. Look, I'm curious. You walked in here earlier, you'd practically made your mind up. Now you've changed it. Why? <laughs> because I made a stupid, impulsive move. Celia and I had a, had a little, a little bit of an argument, and I ran out of the house thinking that things could never work out in Port Charles. And then the more that I thought about it, the more that I realized our leaving would only make her miserable. I see. Robert, I love that woman. And I'll be damned if I'm going to see her suffer because of me. Grant, you're making this hard on yourself. I can handle it. I hope so. Wouldn't you do the same thing for Holly? No question. All right, there's your answer. I'm glad you understand how I feel. Look, I... I really wish there was some way that I could make this whole thing a little bit easier for you. Well, there really isn't. This is just something that Celia and I are going to have to face alone. Not quite. We're friends. I'll never forget that. Where are you going now? I'm going to go out and I'm going to take a nice long walk, sort out my thoughts. And after I cool down, I'm going to rush straight home and tell my wife how much I love her. Wrong list. I was doing a little sleuthing on the side. Peter, Doc. What did you find out? A young woman showed up at the dance studio just as I was finishing my lesson. Hmm? Her name was Melissa. She offered Hannibal $15 for one lesson. And he turned it down, of course. Flat. Figured. He, he said it was all or nothing, and he gave the poor girl such a spiel that she went straight off to Benny's and sold a ring that her mother had had. Just so that she could give some money to dear sweet Hannibal. Right. Needless to say, Benny stuck it to her as well. Right again. She ended up selling him a $250 ring for $125. He's the salt of the earth. He's still in fine form. Not quite so fine. I bought it for $130. Would you do break his knees? Just a little simple negotiating. The poor guy, he's going to be in analysis for years. Well, it didn't hurt that my husband was a police commissioner. I'll bet. So what are you going to do with uh, the ring? I'm going to give it back to Melissa as soon as I've exposed Hannibal for the fraud that I think he is. Well, he may have stumbled on something here. You know what? He actually mentioned cutting down the number of classes I'm going to be doing again. Why, he must be quite a dancer. According to Hannibal, he thinks that I'm ready to audition for Roland Gilbert any day now. That'll be a, <clears throat> a big surprise, Mr. Gilbert. What do you mean? Call him this morning. What did he say? Mm. Robert! Never heard of Hannibal. Wanted to send the guy to the gas chamber. <laughs> Can you blame him? Well, needless to say, I dissuaded him from that course of action. However, I did say that I had one of my best men on the job. Oh, great. I do all the work, and your department gets all the credit. Well, welcome to the wonderful world of law enforcement. Anyway, you should be happy with a pat on the head for a job well done. You know, you really could be quite right about this. I knew it all along. Well, aren't you going to say it? What? I told you so. You just did, darling. I'm going to be living this down for years. You know something? Hmm? I think when you step down as police commissioner, I might just take over, you know, keep it in the family. And tell me, did um, Madame Poirot learn anything else today? As a matter of fact, I did. What? Well, there was uh, this, and uh, this. And uh, we did one of these. What about the huckle bump? <laughs> We're gonna just <laughs> put them at the policeman's ball. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you calling me, Mr. Armistead, but uh, have you no idea where he's gone? I see. Hey, very well. And uh, yes, do that. Thank you. Bye.
was the real Grant Putnam's lawyer from New York. Yes, I heard. What did he want? Apparently, Putnam checked out of his hotel, but he did not go to uh, Amagansett said as he said he would. Where did he go? It's the reason Armistead called. He has no idea why the man left, or where, or why he was going. Well, Armistead wouldn't have called unless he thought there was something wrong. The real Grant didn't give him any idea of where he's going? None. He thought the same as you and I did, that the guy would stay put. Grant and Celia certainly don't need any more complications in their life right now. Oh. And speaking of complications... Oh, you mean Hannibal. Mm. As a matter of fact, that reminds me. I haven't found out when my next dancing lesson is going to be. If I'm going to have to keep on acting excited, if I'm going to be the next toast on Broadway. Mr. Hannibal? Yes, it's Margaret McTavish. You know, I was so excited after my last lesson, I forgot when my next one is. Now? Well, yes, of course I can. As a matter of fact, I just got home. I still haven't changed out of my rehearsal clothes. Yes, that's very nice of you, Mr. Hannibal. Thank you. I'll leave right now. What do you mean you leave right now? You just got here. I swear, the man is a con artist and he's really good at it. He said he just had a last-minute cancellation. And if I want to, I can have my lesson right now. And you, of course, said yes. I just said. I have to act excited. Of course I'm going. I paid the man $150 in advance. My attitude has to be, I can't wait for him to make me a star. And my attitude is that you be careful. Robert, the man is running a scam. I know that game better than he does. I'm going to be just fine. Much better, Melissa. You're doing fine. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hannibal. So, what do you want me to do next? Well, that's it for today. <laughs> I thought my lessons were in an hour. I mean, I haven't been here nearly that long. In dance, Melissa, it's not the amount of time you spend, it's the quality of that time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go down the hall for a minute. I'll see you next time as usual. Whatever you say. Where's our teacher? Well, Mr. Hannibal said he had to go down the hall for a minute. Well, I'll just uh, warm up until he gets back. And, uh, did you have a good class, M Melissa? It is Melissa, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> My lesson was fine, what there was of it. I don't understand. I mean, I'm not complaining. It's just that I'm down to like nine more lessons, and I was sure today would really make me work hard. And didn't he? I've only been here about 20 minutes and suddenly it says I'm through for the day. That might be a good sign. You must be making progress. Yeah, well, I have to. You have to? Why do you say that? Because I used all my savings to pay in advance. Now, I have got to get a job on Broadway, you know. Did Mr. Hannibal say that you will? Well, he seems to think so. You know, he's casting Roland Jabbar's new show. Yes, so he said. Roland Jabbar, well, he's just about the most famous choreographer in the whole world. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and, you know, they're very close friends. In fact, um, they work very closely together. Mr. Hannibal calls him Raleigh. I thought I told you you were finished for the day. Oh, I, I was just leaving, but we got to talk then. Well, let me give you some advice. And this goes for you too, Margaret. Yes? You two are competing against each other. You might as well know that right now. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and people going after the same job do much better not to socialize. I hope you know what I mean. Oh, no, I do. I guess I just never thought of it that way. Well, you must. You see what I mean, don't you, Margaret? Yes, perfectly. Well, I'll be going. Remember, dear, it's dog-eat-dog. -dog. You must let nothing stand in your way. I won't. Well, if you're all warmed up, I think we'll begin with plies. On one, please. <coughs> Five, six, seven. And. Excuse me. 
Let me rest now. Animal speaking. Yes, that's correct. Uh, would you excuse me just a minute? Margaret, would you mind stepping out into the hall? This is a private call. Oh, of course not. Uh, tell me, if you will, have you had any professional dance experience before? At the high school? I see. Well, uh, well, very often that could be helpful. Well, yes. As it happens, I can fit one more student into my schedule. And since you've had experience, I can accept you right now. Well, shall we say, uh, tomorrow at 10? Yes. Oh, and you understand that'll be a minimum of 10 lessons at $15 each. That's $150 payable in advance. 